market design is, of course, an ancient human activity. People have been building markets for as long as there's been agriculture, at least. Only recently have economists started to feel that we know, that we start to understand enough about this that sometimes we can help. Because markets otherwise evolve by trial and error, and there can be long periods of error. A couple of things have happened in financial markets. One of them is, what is a bank? There's a sense in which we used to say a bank is a company called a bank. But, but maybe anybody who borrows in the short term and lends in the long term is a bank. They are performing banking functions. And maybe we should start to regulate all the financial securities that do that a little as if they are banks. Similarly, things that form insurance, when, when, when you have insurance companies, there's over the years built up a lot of understanding that risks that an insurance company can take on should be independent of each other. But various kinds of financial insurance in instruments turned out not to be independent of each other, not to be insuring independent risks. So we need to understand better. We start to understand better how to investigate those things. Now, while we're still on financial markets, many of the simple rules of design were made when people did all the trading. Now computers do a lot of the trading, and that changes the speed and it changes the manner of competition. Uh, and so Eric Budish at Chicago, a student of mine, for instance, has been studying how we get market failures due to high-frequency trading that didn't used to occur with the old rules that were very adequate for low-frequency trading, and how we might have to change the rules to accommodate to the fact that trading can now happen much faster and competition can be on speed instead of on price. So th those are new ways to think about markets that come up because of the ways the markets have evolved. We've started to learn more about what marketplaces have to do in order to make markets work well. And so marketplaces have to assemble enough people to make the market thick. They have to, once the market's thick, they, they have to deal with congestion. When there are lots of people in the market, coming to the marketplace, it's hard to deal with them all, to, to evaluate all the transactions that you have to evaluate. So the marketplace has to help them do that. It has to be safe to reveal the necessary information and participate in the market in a way that lets it, it um, reach an efficient outcome. And what my colleagues and I have particularly focused on is many markets don't work like commodity markets. In a commodity market, price does all the work, and the job of the market is price discovery. So in the New York Stock Exchange, the, the job of the stock exchange is to find a price for, for each security at which supply equals demand. But in the employment market, that isn't how people get employed. They, the big companies with desirable jobs don't reduce the wage until just enough people want to work for them. They keep the wage high enough so that lots of people would want to work for them, and then they decide who to hire. And they can't just choose who to hire, they have to compete with other companies. Uh, universities don't raise the tuition until just enough students want to come to the university. They keep the tuition low enough that many students would like to come, and then they select them, they admit them. So, so these are institutions that are matching markets where they're not anonymous, the way a stock market would be, a commodity market. They, if you're admitted to college, you personally are admitted. If um, they're not anonymous, and price doesn't do the work. They don't set a price so that supply equals demand. So. Uh, so they have other institutions of market clearing, and, and sometimes we can make those work better so that they help make the market thicker and deal with congestion and make the market safe to participate in. Financial crises, in part, result from financial innovation. You know, at the time of the Great Depression, we discovered that banks needed to be regulated, that insurance companies needed to be regulated, and, and we developed systems of regulation, different ones in different countries, but similar, uh, that banks had to have capital reserves, that insurance companies did as well. Now, over the years, people invented new financial instruments that allowed them to perform some banking functions without being called banks, and some insurance functions without being called insurance, and so they escaped the regulation of banks, and they, they functioned differently, and partly they were designed to accomplish new things, and partly they were designed to, to be unregulated. Uh, and some of those have failed. Some of them turned out to be insurance products that, that weren't regulated by insurance regulators. Maybe they were lightly regulated by, by securities regulators. Well, as we understand better how they work, we can think about how to regulate them. And I think that's 
a natural part of the evolution of, of markets as people develop new products to sell, new financial products to sell. We learn how they work and how they fail, and then we think how we should regulate them, what the rules should be for these products to make them more secure, to make them safer. Remember that not every market is a commodity market. So often when we think of commodity markets, we think they remove personal relationships, they become anonymous and arm's length and change people's relationship to each other. But think about labor markets. When you get a job offer, it's you in person, you who have gotten the offer. You know, someone wants to hire you, not me. So I, so I think of markets as a very broad class of human activities. And again, very ancient. When you, when you look at Stone Age tools, you find them distributed far from where they were quarried and made. So even before the invention of agriculture, human beings were trading with each other. And we don't know quite how they organized those markets, but, but you can see that the tools traveled thousands of miles from, from where they were made and where they were, were, were built. So I think markets are like language. They are ancient human artifacts. They are things that people make and have made for a long time. They are, they are part of what people do. One of the things we're seeing are MOOCs, you know, classes taught on the internet to very large numbers of people. Uh, certainly there's a, a increased availability of certain kinds of education that way. Um, my colleagues and I have been involved in, in school choice in a number of American cities for, for primary education, for, for public education. Um, and that's a way, that's like kidneys a little bit. That's a, a marketplace where we don't want money to decide which children should go to which public school slots. But we would like to uh, assign school places efficiently. What's, what's a shame is, is if your child is going to a school that we really wanted our child to go to, and at the same time our child is going to a school that you really wanted your child to go to. So there are benefits of running a marketplace that takes these things into account, even though it can be one that doesn't use money. So, so just incidentally, when I, when I speak about matching markets, these more personal markets like labor markets and college admissions and school assignment, I'm speaking um, about markets that, that even when money is present, as in American universities, it's not decide who gets what. It, it doesn't, it's not used to decide who gets what. So Stanford University, where I teach, doesn't use tuition to equate supply and demand. It doesn't raise the price until just enough students want to come. It, it's expensive to go to Stanford, but it's cheap enough so that lots of people would like to come. And we have an admissions office that, that admits some, and there's a whole market procedure of applications and essays and interviews. And, and so markets like that are more complex than commodity markets. They need more design in order to clear well.